Okay, so in this poem we're told, a person jumps from the roof of a house 3.9 meters high. When he strikes the ground below, he bends his knees so that his torso decelerates over an approximate distance of 0.7 meters. If the mass of his torso, excluding legs, is 42 kilograms, find A, his velocity just before his feet strike the ground, and B, the average force exerted on his torso by his legs during the deceleration. So in order to solve this problem, first let's draw what's going on. So we have this guy. He's going to uh, jump off this roof. That's 3.9 meters high. And then he's going to land here. And then we know that uh, he's going to slow down, right? He's going to use his legs. Uh, or he's bending his knees so that his torso decelerates. So he's going to use his uh, knees. He's going to bend and decelerate uh, over an approximate distance of 0.7 meters. So uh, we'll deal with that in the second part. But let's just actually focus on the first part first. So essentially in the first part, what we're trying to find is his velocity. Uh, right when he lands. So right before his, his feet strike the ground here, we're trying to find his velocity. And so the way you're going to solve the first part, or A, is you're going to use kinematics. So uh, the first thing I always like to do with kinematics is to write out my given, and then I write out all the kinematic variables we're going to be using. So uh, the variables are going to be delta y, and we're using y because we're basically working along the y direction. So he's going to be changing his y, or his position. So delta y, we have v sub zero, we have v, we have a, and we have t. So we have initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, and time. So the interval is from here to there. And what we're trying to find is his velocity uh, at the end of the interval. So v final. So we'll say that equals question mark since that's what we're trying to solve for. Uh, starting here, delta y. So if he starts here and he goes down 3.9 meters, he's going to be decreasing by 3.9 meters. So imagine this is zero. And this would be minus 3.9, like on a graph here, you can imagine it. So his change in y goes from 0 to th uh, minus 3.9. So the change is minus 3.9 meters. Uh, the negative is because he's going down 3.9. Uh, the initial velocity is going to be 0 meters per second because we're assuming he's just going like this. And he doesn't have any velocity right when he uh, starts his jump. So this is going to be 0 meters per second. Uh, acceleration is going to be the acceleration due to gravity, and it's going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, 9.8 is just the constant, and we label it negative because it's downwards. And then the final thing is time. We actually don't know that, uh, and we're not going to need it, so I'll just cross it out here. And so now that I have three kinematic variables, I know that I can solve for v using one of the kinematic equations. So uh, the equation we're going to use is this one right here, v squared equals v sub zero squared plus 2a times delta y. So the reason we're using this one is because we have v, or sorry, we're solving for v, we have v sub zero, we have a, and we have delta y. So it's just a matter of plugging it in. Uh, but notice first, to get rid of this square, since we're just solving for v, v would square both sides. So v is going to be equal to uh, the square uh, v sub zero squared, which is just zero squared. So zero squared is still zero. <laughs> Two times a, which is minus 9.8. And then times delta y is minus 3.9. So let's go ahead and plug this into our calculators. So you have 2 times nine, uh, minus 9.8 times minus 3.9. And so when you do this, you're going to get a value of a value of 8.74. So the velocity is going to be equal to 8.74 meters per second. So this is going to be their speed uh, right before they, or the velocity right before the feet strike the ground. So key minus 8.74 meters per second, and obviously it's down because we're going down. So uh, yeah, 8.74 meters per second, and then you can just say it's down. Um, but that's going to be your answer to A. So we just found A. Now let's go ahead and move on to uh, B. So let's go ahead and do B now. Okay, so now we're going to do B. And B is asking us to find the average force exerted on his torso by his legs during deceleration. So the first thing we're going to want to do is kind of draw the free body diagram of what's going on. So we're going to have the force F of P, which is what uh, is pushing, right? And then you also have the force due to gravity, which is MG. So these are your two forces in this case. And so we know the sum of the forces 
in the y we'll say since we're acting along the y is equal to ma so ma is going to be equal to uh, and then we have uh, mg so i'm going to say downwards is positive so downwards is positive so mg minus fp so if we do this fp i add this to the other side and then subtract you have mg minus ma so fp equals m g minus a so in order to find for this fp that the person is going to be applying we need to find their acceleration over this interval and so the way we do that is by using kinematics so let's go ahead and do that now so given we have delta y we have v sub zero we have v we have a and we have t so let me go ahead and do this uh, and then they tell us that um the they tell us it's going to be over an interval of 0.7 so since downwards is negative uh the interval or sorry the delta y is going to be 0.7 meters so positive is down uh the initial velocity is going to be uh what we found right here so the interval is basically this part right here where they go down 0.7 meters so their initial velocity is the velocity they land with which was 8.74 so we know that value and then we also know that at the end, they're going to be stopped, right? Because they're going and then they eventually stop. So the final velocity is zero meters per second because at that point, they're not moving. Time we don't know. And what we're solving for is the acceleration, the plug in here. So we need to find the acceleration. So let's solve for that. So the way we're going to do this is by using this formula, this kinematic formula. V squared equals V sub zero squared plus 2A times delta Y. Uh, v, as I said before, is zero because we stop at the end of the interval. So... We basically have minus v sub zero equals 2a delta y. We want a, so divide by this. And you'll have a equals minus v sub zero squared over 2 times delta y. So uh, the initial velocity at this interval is 8.74, because that was our velocity at the end of the last interval, uh, right, right when we land. And then we have 2 times delta y, which is 0.7. So... Let me go ahead and plug this in. So 8.74. And I'm going to use the exact value uh, in my calculator. So 8.74299 about. So I'm squaring that. And then I'm dividing by 1.4, which is just 2 times 0.7. So you're going to get minus 54.6. Uh, the units of acceleration are meters per second squared. And so now we have it. F of P equals the mass, which they tell us is a value of 42 kg. So they tell us that value. And then gravity, remember how we said downwards is positive? So we have 9.8 minus, uh, and then the acceleration. And so keep in mind it's negative because it's pointing upwards. So we kind of just flopped the axis. Like here we made it the opposite, downwards was negative, but this way is much easier if you make downwards positive. So all we're doing is plugging in f of p now. So 42, 9.8 minus 54.6. Or sorry, it's minus negative. I forgot. So right, it's g minus a. So minus the minus value. Sorry about that. So really, it just becomes plus. So that was my mistake. 42 times 9.8 minus 54.6. And so you're going to get a value of... Uh, when you go ahead and do this, sorry about that, 42 times 9.8 times 54.6, you get a value of 2704.8, so about 2.7 times 10 to the 3 and then this is going to be newtons since we're talking about force so f of p your force is going to be equal to 2.7 times 10 to the 3 newtons uh, and then keep in mind the way we drew it so f of p is upwards so the force uh, the force is obviously just upwards so 2.7 times 10 to the 3 newtons that's going to be the average force exerted on the torso uh, during deceleration so 2.7 times 10 to the 3 newtons and yeah so this is going to be your answer and hopefully you found this video helpful